Live animal transport. <laughs> Make way! We're coming through! These things are gonna outlive all of us combined because this is an ancient prehistoric animal. Their lifespan is insane. Today is the day to move the heart koi into this tank. Let's do it. <laughs> this is the day I've been waiting for. Today is the day that we're moving the heart koi. Remember that really cool koi that we have that has the heart on the side of them? We're moving him from the quarantine tank into his permanent home indoors. So this is gonna be awesome to see him swimming around inside of the tank the way he was designed to do it. The other thing that we're gonna be doing is we're moving those amazing sturgeon, those prehistoric looking fish that are down in the bottom of that pond right outside our front door. We're moving them into a bigger home. These guys are gonna get massive, so we wanna make sure they have plenty of water. We just completed a massive pond in the back of our property, and it's gonna be the perfect home for these amazing, amazing sturgeon. So we're getting ready to pull the heart koi out of the quarantine tank. Noah's been doing a phenomenal job. He is the in-house koi expert that we have here. He's been caring for the heart koi. Obviously, for a lot of reasons, we take care of all of our fish. We wanted to quarantine them for a couple weeks. Noah gave him a clear bill of health, so he's ready to go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna catch him using the koi sock net. We're gonna transfer him over into that big main tank so he could be on display for everyone coming into our facility. The entire reason that we purchased this incredible fish. All right, let's grab him. <laughs> Success. Now all we have to do is monitor the fish so I know Noah, the entire team here at the pawn shop, they take good care of all the animals, but we're always looking for just subtle signs. You wanna watch the fish. We wanna see how they're interacting. You wanna see if they're eating most importantly. So we're gonna watch all those things, especially for the first few days. Once we get past that, everything should be set and we'll be good. from the oldest water feature at Aqualand. Not just the oldest pond, but the oldest thing here. We built this before the actual building was completed. So this went in in 2005, 17 years old. Not very deep, two and a half feet. But what's unique about it is it's a long, narrow, riverine type of a system, which is kind of going to mimic the habitat where sturgeon are from. It's a riverine fish. They're not found in shallow, little riffle areas. They're found in big river systems. We have that beautiful waterfall at one end, which is constantly churning and mixing up the water, bringing in atmospheric oxygen into the water column, which is going to help with the fish. We added those incredible albino sturgeon into this pond earlier this summer, but we just completed our recreational pond in the back of the building. This brand new pond is insane. Over 15,000 gallons of water, four feet deep, tons of room and space for incredible animals. And the sturgeon are gonna be rehomed right now from here to that new pond. The only challenge that I have with it is because of the age of this pond, there's a lot of life inside of it all types of microorganisms and things like that living inside of the gravel bed in the interstitial spaces of all the stuff that's inside of here, which is the food source for the sturgeon. The new pond in back doesn't have the life yet. So we're gonna have to feed these guys more in order to ensure their survival. My first step, safely move these fish. Then we're gonna have to come up with that new feeding regiment to make sure that these guys are gonna be happy and healthy for literally decades to come. These things are gonna outlive all of us combined because this is an ancient prehistoric animal. Their lifespan is insane. The other reason I wanna move them in back is we put in that incredible viewing window. So that's gonna give us a behind the scenes look underwater to see exactly how they feed and survive on a daily basis. We 
capture the sturgeon, we put them into the tub. We gotta take this all the way into the back. We wanna try to limit their stress. One thing that I wanna do is I wanna take as much water out of here as possible because it's gonna keep them from jumping. So a shallow amount of water, still gonna allow them to breathe, a lot of oxygen transfer, but they can't get that kick to jump out. Last thing I wanna do is have one of these guys jump out onto the asphalt. That would be a nightmare, so you wanna make sure that that doesn't happen. You could also see they are stressed. You can see by some of the positioning of them, this guy got scraped up a little bit somehow. Not sure how or where, but these are unfortunately the things that happen. But by having proper water quality, by having good water quality and a good environment, these things are going to happen in nature. And if they're a healthy fish, they're going to be able to overcome this stuff. All right, let's get them in back as soon as possible. <laughs> Big way! We're coming through! Water quality looks incredible. I've already started adding beneficial bacteria and enzymes into the water. Let's check out these incredible fish. Just ancient prehistoric fish, just beautiful. So look at those sensory things on the bottom here. They're actually kind of have a hard bony plate along the back. Let's roll them real quick here. See those little barbels on the bottom? He is a true bottom feeder. That ventrally located mouth means he could suck up all that stuff that's living down in the gravel bed, which makes us an incredible species. But they have been threatened over the years. Thankfully, water temperature, water chemistry, everything is exactly the same. Both the ponds are on our property, so there is no issues with any type of cross-contamination. This pond is gonna be an, a great new home. There you go. Tons more room, over 15,000 gallons of water in this pond, four feet deep, huge bottom section, large wetland filtration system. And it's been an incredible experience moving all these fish into their permanent home. We're going to be able to monitor them as well as enjoy them all season long right here at Aqualand. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more information coming directly from our corporate headquarters right here in St. Charles, Illinois, the water garden capital of the world. All right, everybody, we'll see you soon.